Hello there, welcome along. This is Business Connections Live, another great program lined up for you. It is program number 55. Uh, great to have you with us tonight. Uh, this evening, got a great guest on the program, fantastic guest on the program. We're going to be talking about legal services for business, the future of legal services for business business, how the whole landscape there is changing at the moment. My guest tonight is Andrew Weaver from Lawyer Fair. Andrew, lovely to have you with us. Thank you very much for the invite. Uh, we're talking about something that is, uh, that's probably the, the kind of thing that people don't want to talk about, but have to talk about on a regular, ongoing basis, is the fact of getting legal advice and making certain that they're getting the right legal representative to do the work for them. And for many years, it's been a bit of a, it's been a bit of hit and miss, isn't it? It's a bit like you never know whether you've got a good accountant until you get your next accountant. <laughs> and I suppose when it comes to legal advice and and the kind of people that you're dealing with there, the legal profession, you're never certain that you're getting the best advice from the person you're talking to until you talk to the next one, who maybe will give you alternative advice or whatever. Mm, mm. That's what your business is set up to do, isn't it? It's to resolve some of that and make it a bit easier for businesses. Tell me a bit about Legal Fair. It is. Well, Lawyer Fair uh, essentially helps business owners to find the right lawyer at the best price. That's essentially what we do. We're a legal comparison and procurement service that's dedicated to the business market. And you know what's great about it? Our service is absolutely free. So it costs nothing at all to use our service. And I'll go into detail later about exactly how it works. But just going back to that issue about selecting the lawyer and not knowing about it. I mean, the legal profession has for two centuries pretty much not changed. And that's part of what we're trying to address here. But it's very clear from research, not just from anecdotal information. Lots of lawyer jokes out there about how bad and good they might be. But there's lots of research that indicates two things. One, that the market is extremely grumpy with the legal profession. And I'll give you one quote. Uh, the Legal Services Board last year uh, did a survey that indicated, I think, over 9,000 businesses. So it was a fairly scientific uh, study. And it found out that seven out of eight, which is a remarkable figure, seven out of eight SMEs felt they didn't get value from legal services, uh, which I think is pretty shocking. But, uh, pretty worrying, actually. And very worrying, indeed. Uh, the other element of, of, of a survey that came out last year also shows that the actual um hesitation about using legal services for whatever reason. And that was a survey that indicated that 52%, so a majority of business owners, actually preferred to muddle through rather than seek external legal help. Lots of reasons why that happens. Cost predominantly, I suspect, is one of them. But also, actually, the, 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 the traditional way of finding a lawyer, it's not comfortable. Uh, it, it can be difficult. It's often through recommendations, uh, perhaps through a local networking group. You're often using lawyers that you really don't have any background information about. And therefore, I think a number of business owners prefer to, to go through and do it themselves with clear risk, particularly for businesses that are starting, where cost is clearly a, a major element. But if you get the legal documents wrong at the beginning, it can very much come back to bite you uh, later down the road. So there's clear market pain, and, but there's also a clear market that isn't using legal services that should be. I suppose for any small business that is starting up, of course, it is going to be an essential, isn't it? And for the inexperienced business owner, there is going to be that, maybe that hesitance to actually go out there and actually talk to somebody legally and to try to, to muddle through. They'll think they can find it on the internet, the information they need, their T's and C's mm -hmm. are the kind of thing they can find on the internet. Is that the kind of service that you're initially targeting at, that, that initial business startup, small SMEs where you've got maybe you're looking at contracts for premises and places like that. Is that the kind of services that, that you're providing? Well, Lawyer Fair covers a whole a gamut of, 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 of uh, companies and business owners, ranging from the startup, but we also deal with quite substantial businesses. There is no doubt that the market has become much more competitive, and it doesn't matter how big or small you are, you want your legal fees bill to be as competitive as possible. So we're getting approached, increasingly approached, by quite large businesses, but certainly the startup businesses also contact us. One of the key areas for the startup environment and the early stage business is that, uh, it goes back to the point I've already made, is you know, you've got to get your legal information documentation in place uh, and secure early. And I think one of the reasons why business owners are hesitant about it is not just cost, but it's the fact that lawyers have not traditionally been very commercial. So I'll give you an example. Uh, you may go to a lawyer, particularly if it's a local lawyer, uh, and you may ask them for some, some information. Now they may not, through a lack of experience, excuse me, <coughs> remnants of a cold, mm -hmm. they may not actually be that commercially savvy. So they might slightly over-engineer the work that's required, which for the startup and for the, the company that has a very restricted budget, that's not what they need. So, but that's changing. There are lots and lots of people coming into the market, not just lawyer fare, lots and lots of operators coming in who are offering fixed fee, low cost, um, 
very efficient ways of structuring your business, legally structuring it at the beginning. And to some extent, there are better operators than us that can service that market, and I'm very happy to go into detail. But yes, the, the ability now for the business owner to find good quality, uh, cost-effective legal advice is, is it's transformed from where it was even three or four years ago. Bearing in mind, as I said, it's a, it's a two-century-old profession that's never moved. Is that it due is to recent dramatically. deregulation and things like that? Yeah, there's a couple of reasons. Deregulation certainly is a major factor. There was a, The Legal Services Act came in in 2007. Uh, one of the key changes that came out of that was something called alternative business structures. I'm not going to go into boring acronyms here. I can see you falling asleep already. Um, but the beauty about what they call as an ABS is it allowed external investment to come in. You could be a non lawyer now and own a law firm if it's what's called an ABS. So deregulation, uh, external finance, that's created a lot more innovation. And remember, this is a low innovation space. Lawyers haven't had to change. They've not been made to change. There's a great guy called uh, Richard Susskind. I think he's professor, maybe doctor. I if he's watching, Richard, I'm sorry if I've got the detail wrong. Uh, but he's a great, uh, a great um, legal futurist. He's written about the future of legal services for many, many years. And he tells a lovely story about how, uh, or an anecdote, he says it's very difficult to go into a room of millionaires and ask them to change their business model. Lawyers haven't been forced <laughs> to change their business model, but they are now having to be uh, change it and they're having to recognize the change that's coming. And that change is being driven by deregulation, by innovation, by investment, and frankly, by the commercial norms that the rest of us in business have to have to operate our businesses by competition and choice and efficiencies now you don't look like a lawyer or is it a the jacket is that what's it's the it? jacket it's the lack of tie yeah. it's the fact you've got the remnants of a cold <laughs> you're, you're not actually as such a legal firm are you no we're not we're not a legal and Just i'm not explain, a lawyer uh, which is a good point to make <laughs> so lawyer fair then what exactly is lawyer fair? What what is the service that you're providing then to the small business? Well, lawyer fair is very much uh, working on behalf and on the side of the entrepreneur and the business owner, and that's what who we are. That it was formed by business owners uh, about a year or so ago. Uh, a little frustrated with that traditional mechanism for finding good quality commercial lawyers. There is a, a real distinction here. There are um, legal comparison services, there are finer lawyer services. Uh, there's nothing particularly new in that, but there are very few, in fact, none when we started, that focused only on the commercial market. And the reason is that the business owner is a slightly more discerning buyer of legal services. They have to be. It's a critical uh, purchase for them, and often it's a regular purchase. So they want their lawyers to be of a certain quality. On the other side of the fence, the good quality commercial lawyers also uh, want to be getting good quality leads, good quality clients. And we match them together in a much more personal, bespoke way than a simple internet matching service. So what we do is we get a, 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 an instruction come in from a business owner. They require, let's say it's a commercial lease uh, re renewal or an assignment of a lease. And we will match them with pre-approved expert lawyers. And they're lawyers that we have selected ourselves through a certain criteria. Uh, and they are genuine experts and they're available and they are competing against each other for that work. So if you, I don't know, let's say uh, the traditional way you might have taken you a week or so to find a lawyer. Uh, let's go into a more niche area. I don't know, you're looking for an SEIS investment. Um, it might have taken you a little bit of time to find a lawyer. It might have come through a recommendation. You weren't necessarily sure it was the most competitive price, but oh, hey, where else do you go? Within 20, 30 minutes sometimes, we can deliver two or three of those options for you. All right. Well, -approved. well, what we'll do, we'll, co we'll come back in more detail okay. and look at, uh, I mean, I think the thing that's important, because you're not a lawyer yourself, but you're operating this, it's, it's nearly, it, it is a comparison side. Yes. But with a difference, with a bit of an edge to it, a bit of a twist, um, is to find out <clears throat> how you select your individual uh, lawyers that you recommend on there, what the criteria is that they go about, why they're going to be right for small to medium scale enterprises, and, and really just to find out what the process is, how people get paid, um, in as much as how do I, as somebody coming to your website, actually, you know, who do I pay? Do I pay you? Do I pay them? Sure, sure. Where, do, where, where is my legal contract? Is it between you? Is it between them? Yep, so yep. to find out a little bit more about that and what the key core advantages are by using a service like yours, you've already really highlighted some of them. I want to find out a little bit, though, about the man that's sitting here in front of me, though. Right. Just tell me a little bit of your background because, you know, it's all about gaining trust, particularly when you're talking about the legal profession and the legal industry. Mm. This, you trust instinctively a lawyer, you trust instinctively a solicitor because of the industry that they work in. You've already said that you're outside that industry, so what, what's your background? Well, uh, I was brought up in Cornwall, 
Um, my father was a kind of traditional small local businessman. Um, he had a number of businesses down there. Uh, we didn't naturally work together very well, so I didn't actually end up following him directly. But that was my that was my background, and I actually strangely fell into legal management uh, by by a very strange quirk of circumstances, and I ended up being a barrister's clerk. So in my twenties, uh, so I you can actually really get the nitty gritty of this, don't you? I do. I mean, in, in a very strange way, and a barrister's clerk is a wonderful world. Uh, it was more mysterious then. There's lots of programs now that kind of bring out, and everybody asks me, are you the guy from Silk or the guy from yeah. World Square? Well, there are elements <laughs> well, of that, I'm sure. Now, anyway, uh, you're well, better. You know. uh, there are lots of stories. But um, I rather fell into that, and I ended up um, running a barrister chambers in Manchester, a criminal set. Bags of fun. We prosecuted some great cases. Dr. Shipman was one of our more famous cases. A lot of fun. But actually, my commercial grounding was what was coming through for me. So I, I left and, and, and did an MBA and went into the commercial world. And since then, which is about 14, 15 years ago, a variety of uh, uh, interests, um, launched a couple of firms. I ran a corporate deals firm. But the essence of all of these things was that they, there was a consistency of using lawyers. So I either worked with, alongside, or instructed lawyers in pretty much my entire career. And latterly, uh, particularly in the corporate deals environment, where we were doing a lot of M&A work and a lot of deals with lawyers, I just felt that there was a better way of instructing, of finding, of working with good quality lawyers. And I'm not, this is not an anti-lawyer service. This is very much about a platform for giving the best lawyers uh, a way of uh, working with the best businesses uh, and the businesses that are in need. And I'll elaborate on that in a second. So. Um, probably about two or three years ago, I thought, I, I don't want to wear a tie anymore. You know, I, I want to be able to wear a, a mismatched uh, jacket and shirt if that's, if that's what I feel like. Congratulations, you've succeeded. <laughs> Thank you, I, I've succeeded <laughs> in that area. Um, uh, but I also, more importantly, felt that the internet and technology, which essentially has penetrated every corner of our lives, but hasn't really got into legal services, not in, a, not in an aggressive way. And uh, I just felt that there was an opportunity to, uh, as do many other startups in this sector now, to provide greater value, greater access, and essentially change it a little from a supply-led uh, industry, which it always has been traditionally controlled by the lawyer, uh, to a demand-led industry where the business owner is in control. And uh, we do that through choice competition, through reviews and various other factors. So that was what I, so essentially, I, you could say poacher turned gamekeeper. You know, I was the man that charged my services on a, an hourly rate. Mm -hmm. I was the man that did the traditional legal professional services culture and, and felt that having been in it, there could be a different way of doing it. So I know what lawyers need, I know what good quality lawyers want, but I also know what business owners need and should be given. And I think we're trying to combine the two. What kind of resistance have you had from the traditional legal profession then? Well, uh, we've had some. Yes, we've had the occasional irate phone call. Um, there are three types of lawyers that we deal with. There are the ones that get it. There are other ones, and there are many of them, uh, who, who realise where the wind is blowing. They realise that the way they deliver legal services is, go is going to be transformed, whether they like it or not. Um, by the innovation that's coming through. So those that get it. There are those that kind of get it but want to ignore it. And there are those that are hostile to it. And I would say at the moment, from our personal experience, it's probably about third, 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 frankly. Um, which does mean that two thirds of lawyers are kind of sitting around thinking, you're not really getting into to the changes that are happening. Uh, but generally, we look for a certain type of lawyer. So we are particular about this. We're entrepreneurs ourselves. We kind of say to ourselves, well, look, is the lawyer on our panel, is it someone we would use? Because if we wouldn't, uh, why on earth should we be recommending them? But more specifically, we have certain criteria uh, which, you know, are they able to deliver those legal services in a modern way? Are they able to accept remote instructions? Do they have the capability to do online work? How quickly do they react to inquiries? What's their customer service like? Do they provide fixed fees? Do they stick to those fixed fees? You know, have they the ability to measure the ebb and flow of a legal case? I'll give you a quick example. Um, I've still got you here, haven't I? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no, me. no, I'm still with you. Uh, M and A, which is my background. Um, uh, so for, for, for people that don't know what M and A is, buying and selling businesses, so right. mergers and acquisitions. Now you'll find generally that if you go to a lawyer and say, "I want to sell my business," they'll go. That's very tough to price. I, I'm going to have to be on an hourly rate here. This is going to have to be open-ended, which, of course, for the business owner is frightening. No certainty of cost. And, of course, if you don't sell, you could end up with a huge legal bill. Now, the reality is that, that if you're using a lawyer to sell your business, it should be a lawyer who's done the similar kind of sale many times in the past. If you're not, why use them? Um, they're going to blow the deal if they haven't got experience. So you should be using a lawyer who's sold 20 of your type of business. 
We help you find that kind of lawyer, by the way. Now, if he sold 20 of that type of business, he should be able to sell, actually, the average price of that was X. Now, this is the future. I'm not saying every lawyer is able or capable of doing that, but that's where they should be going. So we try to qualify lawyers on the basis of what's their attitude and approach to fees. Are they prepared to do fixed or at least indicative fees and stick to them? And if they're not able to stick to them, do they communicate early to the business owner? Because the business owner's biggest frustration is not only the the size of the bill, but the uncertainty of the bill. So they're key areas. And the one final thing I would point out about our selection criteria, and we call it the Skype test. All right, then. Uh, which I think is a really nice little saying. And basically, we interview via Skype. So we do an actual interview with the lawyer uh, as part of our due diligence. And if the lawyer doesn't like that or isn't comfortable with that, that's a bit of an indication that they're not going to be comfortable providing those kind of services to, to the kind of people who use lawyer fare, who are interested in internet savvy um, efficiencies, immediate uh, contact with their lawyers. It's not the only thing that we use, but it's an interesting process. It's interesting. It's nearly like a technology test, isn't it? A little bit. You know, we don't go over the top because I am a technophobe myself. You know, I'm not going to. But, but, you're but not, it's a you, very you're simple. You're not using a quill pen, pen though, are I'm you? I'm not quite <laughs> using a quill pen or wearing a, a pinstripe suit. Um, but it's a nice way of, of, of establishing a relationship with the lawyer, frankly, that says this is where we're going with this. Uh, and so, we, as I say, we, 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 we have a Skype interview as part of the process. Well, what we'll do, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about how you select your lawyers mm -hmm. and also where the buck stops. For instance, if they don't come up to scratch, what actually happens then and why it's such a good idea and such a good deal for SME small businesses to be using this particular service. Because to leave you with the thought that if, if you've got a lawyer that's sitting on your books, that I can get hold of, there's a chance that he's not a very good lawyer because all the good lawyers are going to be working, aren't they? And that's yes. an expression that you've heard before <laughs> because you told it to me just before we start the program. So we'll come back to that in just right. a few moments' time. Okay. Uh, so if you are thinking about getting legal services for your business at the moment, uh, perhaps Andrew Weaver and Lawyer Fair are going to be the right way of actually going forward. Is it a comparison site? We're going to find out more. It's not strictly a comparison site. It's more a finding site, isn't it? I think yeah, comparison site would be the wrong comparison. There is comparison element to it, but it's very much about bespoke procurement and, and getting the right fit for your business with the right lawyer. And I think that's, you know, we can all find lawyers. You can just pick up any telephone directory or go on the internet and you'll find them. But are they going to be the right lawyer for what you're looking to do? And how do you compare like for like, you know, apples for apples and pears for pears? How how do you go about doing that? Well, hopefully, uh, Lawyer Fair is the kind of service that's going to be able to help you on that. And we'll come back and we'll find out a little bit more about that in just a few more seconds' time. Uh, Belent Osman was on the programme on uh, the last week's edition of Business Connections Live. He was from the App Garden. We were talking about apps for business. Have you ever thought to yourself, do you know what? I've seen these apps. I've got my, uh, my iPhone, my Android, my tablet, my smartphone, and uh, I wish I see other companies they have their apps. I spoke about the fact that I'm now addicted to the British Airways app. Maybe addicted is a little bit too strong. But the thing that I found about it was the absolute convenience that that particular app brought to me. Now, if I was dealing with another business and they could actually bring another app to me that was as convenient and brought the kind of services that that particular app brings, then maybe I would deal more with that particular organisation or that particular company. That's what we were talking about. How do you go about finding somebody to develop something like an app for you? How do you go about marketing the app? What are the kind of things you need to have in your app? How do you go about getting it onto the appropriate platforms? And how do you get it going right across all the different operating system platforms as well? Well, um, Osmond was... Uh, be more polite. Buland was uh, very, very interesting uh, to hear from. It was a fascinating evening. If you've been considering or talking about getting an app for your business, then you need to be watching this edition of Business Connections Live. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about apps for business. With me tonight, uh, my guest is Bulent Osman. He's from the App Garden. Uh, I spend most of my time trying to explain really what an app for business is all about. Um, and, and it's really important to, for any business to understand that it's part, of, part now of a, of a marketing strategy. And there are lots of statistics around that shows that we are you know, interacting with these small pieces of technology uh, many, many times a day, every day of our lives. I ask a very simple question, which is, can you articulate to me what is the purpose of the app? What is it there to do? What is its function? Now, it's a very simple question, but the answer can be actually quite 
difficult to, to articulate? Well, it's important to realise that there are so many apps out there that A, a you need to differentiate your app from, from anybody else's. So what is the core reason why somebody would come back and use your app on, on multiple occasions? There needs to be more than just brochureware inside the app. And so really it's a matter of saying, well, what ways do you connect with your, with your customers today? What ways do you wish to connect with your customers and potential customers and your broad audience? And how can the app help expedite that and improve that, that particular connection. Whereas if you have my app, let's say onto your, on your phone, then what it means is that you as an organization now can communicate with me at any point in time. There's a, there's a feature called the push notification. So it's important that we understand this because this is a very unique feature for apps. A push notification is a, a business orientated, let's call it a text message, it's a short message, message a little bit like a tweet, that if you were to send it to all of the people that have downloaded your app, it pops up on, your sc uh, on the screen and the app doesn't have to be uh, uh, open at the time, it, uh, it just has to be resident on the device uh, and then it'll pop up and it'll make a sound and of course we as human beings now are very much conditioned that if the phone goes there's a little message that pops up, even if we're in a meeting or some sort of conversation, we can't help ourselves can we? No. We end up just looking, very sneakily looking at it and just digesting the, the, the essence of that message. Um, you know, an app is an app is an app, well that's not true at all, it's, it, it's like saying anything in life you have you know cheap and cheerful through to a Rolls-Royce type of solution and I think it's important to say that that there are three types of connections that you can make it's either business to consumer or business to business or business to employee so some large corporations now are talking to us because really what they want to do is communicate with their employees let me take you through the process so we, we've got to the point where the app looks great our customers have down uh, have been reviewing it and they've signed it off uh, through tank viewer and we're all good to go uh, there is a submission process we have to go through so we have to write some keywords you mentioned last week's guest about uh, uh, keywords and, and and that sort of thing and SEO well it's the same with the Apple uh, with the the apps you know because there are so many apps on the app store you want to be found we also uh, work with our customers to come up with all the keywords that are important so when you, anyone does a search on video for example hopefully your app will come up um, uh, as an example and so we go through that process once we collect all that data we then we then submit the app to both Apple and to Google. Now it's interesting, with Google typically we can get it live on the Google Play App Store in about 48 hours because there are no checks, Google don't really mind, there are no quality thresholds, whatever you decide to do they'll accept it. But with Apple they're far more particular so they go for a very very stringent review process. Every single app is reviewed thoroughly by somebody at, at Apple. And so it typically takes between 10 to 14 days for that review process to, to come through. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, my name is Belen Tosman from The App Garden. Uh, so to find us, it's www.theappgarden.co.uk. Um, the key thing to think about is your, your customers. How do you wish to connect with your customers? How do you, need, you wish to improve the loyalty that you have with your customers? And what can you offer in an app that can increase that interaction, uh, a two-way communication with you and your customers? So if you have an idea, please do contact us. Uh, we will help you with that idea, land it, and if you wish to go forward with us, we will then uh, take your app live and help to increase your business. Bernard Osmond there from the App Garden, a fantastic program. So if you are thinking about getting an app for your business, a real opportunity to find out the ins and outs of going about it, doing it properly. Uh, the App Garden, you can find their website very easy. Just uh, Google that. You'll also find a link under this particular program. Uh, the program you need to watch in total, though, the full hour, and it's an hour well spent, is program number 54, where we're talking about apps for business. My guest this evening, though, is Andrew. Weaver from Lawyer Fair. We're talking about, well, finding the right legal services for your business. It's an organization that have been set up uh, to maybe to go out there and to going to hesitate at this. Recommend is the right word, isn't it? Recommend, suggest. Yeah, well, we give you options. We give you options to choose. Your, it's very much your choice, but we will give you probably three, maybe more if that's what you require, of pre-approved bespoke lawyers. These are lawyers who know 
uh, exactly what uh, is required. I'll give you a quick example. I mentioned the SAIS investment, uh, which we were approached on. It was quite specific. It was about film production, uh, a company based in, in London, uh, and we got three lawyers I think within the hour, who had exactly that experience. Uh, they were delivered, this is free of charge, remember, there's no cost to the business owner to use our service. So we delivered the three lawyers, uh, they had an initial conversation with the lawyers, quotes were then prepared and delivered, and they've now selected one of those three lawyers. So it's about choice, it's about competition, but it's also about niche expertise, it's about finding quickly the right lawyer for your business. You mentioned a moment or so ago about the way you select your lawyers, and you, it's nearly a test to see if they're going to be tech savvy. You do this Skype interview, and I suppose it's very much a case if they don't know how to use Skype, then you're, you're really onto a hiding to nothing, aren't you? You do that, but what are the, what's the other criteria that you go through to make certain that the people that are on your website, because it's your reputation they're carrying, yep, are yep. the right people to maintain that reputation? How do you check them out and make well, certain well, they're going to be right for me? It's a really good question in terms of the brand identity for us, because the way that we're, de de uh, the way that we're developing Lawyer Fair, it's very difficult when you're selling a service which actually ultimately is delivered by someone else, so from our perspective. So the control of the brand equity or the control of the, the the, um, the way that people review lawyer fare is, is affected by things out of our control. The only thing we can therefore control is the quality of the people that are on the panel. So it is absolutely critical to us. Now, when you say the panel, that's the people, this that, is the that is your team, effectively. That's your other directors. No, no I'm sorry, panel of lawyers. Panel so we of have lawyers. a panel of lawyers. Now, I'll give you a quick example of why we're different uh, to perhaps other providers in the market. We're the only ones dedicated. Uh, or, uh, there, is a new, there is a competitor, I've got to be fair, uh, that's doing something similar. But we're the, the now one of only two that are dedicated to the commercial market. The rest generally deal with consumer leads. But also, they generally are about price and volume. So they will list 10,000 lawyers in the country, they'll pitch the work out there, they may match it, but they'll pitch it out. There's not the same quality criteria and it's generally driven by price. Now, price is clearly important, but the value of a lawyer as a business owner is actually equally important. How do you, how do you, uh, is there evidence of the value? Is there a way of understanding whether that lawyer who's more expensive is actually going to deliver a longer term better impact for you? So part of our criteria is we build up our panel of lawyers from the bottom up. We are handpicking and selecting them um, based on that value add. And the way that we qualify that is that we look at their market reputation, what their reputation is amongst uh, their peers, perhaps amongst the Legal 500 and various other directories. We also ask them for two or three uh, testimonials that we then uh, will speak to. Uh, we're not interested in them just giving us a couple of quotes from their website. We want to speak to one or two of their clients. So we do do some due diligence that is a, of a level that makes us confident that they are the right quality of lawyer, because clearly their service and their delivery it has a major impact on our brand development and we're a relatively young brand so we need to make sure that almost every uh, touch point with our brand is, is, is a positive one for uh, both the buyer and the supplier of legal services. A lot, a lot of people would look at the legal profession and think to themselves it's a bit of a closed shop right across the board and that you're not going to get one lawyer slagging another lawyer off to use the, the vernacular. It, it, I mean surely there's a certain element of protection, protectionism going on there. Uh, I, I suppose if you were in a room of lawyers, you wouldn't get them slagging each other off, but I can tell you behind <laughs> closed doors, it's slightly different. No, no, listen, th th there's an element to that that is very much part of the past. There, there wasn't the competitiveness that there is now. Uh, lawyers generally could work within their local community and they would... I mean, I, I was in Cornwall, for example, as a, as a, as a boy, as a family. Uh, we got the lawyers we were given, you know, and mm. some of them were a bit rum and one or two of them were OK. But we had to use lawyers that were within square mile distance that we were prepared to travel. Uh, the internet smashes that. I mean, one of the things about lawyer fare is that we completely change that perspective, the geography. There are no barriers anymore to uh, what lawyer you use. I'll give you a, a couple of quick examples. We've got a lawyer up in Gateshead uh, who, who's an excellent guy, was trained at a leading firm in London, but he's from the northeast, went back there. He's competing for work with a very uh, much reduced cost base, but he's competing for work in the southeast, which he couldn't have possibly competed for uh, in the pre-lawyer fare or, 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 or similar services. And of course, the opposite is true for the business owner. You might be based in the heart of London. You might have traditionally had to suffer or, or just have to put up with the London rates, but you don't need to anymore. You can get good quality lawyers who are competing very aggressively for the work. So the key is that uh, we provide that competition, we provide that extended reach for both lawyer and, uh, and business owner. And the competitive element is there, there is definitely competition on price, but as I say it is about illustrating the value. 
And in my view, the value is crucial. And I'll give you a quick example. Um, we are a review site of sorts, but I'm um, very unhappy with the TripAdvisor culture being um, well, it can be very destructive, can't it? Well, it can be very destructive, clearly. But also, if you're reviewing a hotel or a restaurant, you'll leave that place and have an instinctive view about it, and you'll you'll report that, whether it's good or bad. You can't do that with lawyers. You can do it in a way of saying, well, he didn't return my phone calls, or you know, I had to end up dealing with his associate when he was in. Now, there are th certain things that you'll have an immediate sense of. But the work he did, or she did, you may not know the value of that until you need it. And if it's a shareholders agreement, you may not know for two or three years. So the review culture has to be more sophisticated, and, and that's what we're building into the service. And it's because of that approach, and it's because of an approach that we have, which is more about intelligence and insight and data, which is why we're getting good quality lawyers joining us, and why business owners are really respecting the information we provide them. Are lawyers actually approaching you then at the moment, or, or is it the other way yeah, around? It's very uncomfortable. I, I can, you know, I, I can never have a safe moment without a lawyer collaring me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we 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 are getting approached. Uh, increasingly so. Uh, there is a certain momentum to it. We're relatively restrictive at the moment because we don't, we're, not, we're not interested in explosive growth if we can't feed it and look after it. Lawyer Fair brand is about looking after the lawyers as well. Uh, and you're not going to look after, you're not going to have a good quality lawyer uh, uh, working with you over a long term if you don't look after them and provide them a good quality work and, and all the TLC that goes around that. So we're building organically, um, but yes, we do get approached, but we also approach if there are certain areas of law, for example. Uh, we, uh, we had a couple of inquiries about a US visa employment issue, both separate from different types of business. So we've started to look into getting a, a, a couple of people that we can have on the panel, because in that scenario, we had to go out and, and, and look for non-panel lawyers, which we're happy to do, but we don't have the same confidence because we haven't gone through the normal due diligence with them. How many lawyers currently on the panel? I think we're up to about 50. Uh, that's individual lawyers. Remember we, uh, I'm saying remember, I don't think I actually told you this, so mm -hmm. forget that I said remember. Um, <laughs> we are very much about the individual lawyer, so we're not about the firm. It's a crucial key difference with us, although the firm clearly is part of the deal of them coming on board, uh, lawyers change and move, and uh, we are... So it's the individual, then. It's the individual. You're instructing the, the person who's doing the work, not the firm. If, I, if I'm a business and I'm coming to you, then, and I'll be interested to find out what the, the typical business inquiries are that you get, but if I'm a business coming to you and I'm, and I'm dealing... Th am I dealing through you to the lawyer? Or am I, is it just a recommendation from you to the lawyer and then my, my contract call it what you want, it's actually with the, the lawyer on an ongoing basis, yeah. and you then drop out of the loop at that point. Yeah, completely. We are, we are in essence, an introducer. We're, we're, in essence, a broker of that, of that relationship. So we're not lawyers, but we have the angle and the interest of the business owner very much in, a, in, in our perspective. But once they've made that choice, the engagement is direct and traditional. Uh, they sign the engagement terms and go through the normal process. So, and, and, and we don't have a relationship with them. However, what's been interesting is that a number of the businesses have come back to us. So businesses, some stay with the lawyer and discontinue using the same lawyer over a period of time. Some come back and use us again. Do you sell the service in, in such a way as uh, if I come to your website? We've got the website here, in fact. If you wanted to check out the website, it is at Lawyer Fair. And you can see here well, it looks quite uh, good. the right lawyer for business. It does yeah, look quite yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, submit your legal <laughs> requirements. You can then compare the proposals, select the lawyer. Uh, that suits you, and then review the lawyer at that. that would, would that be an interesting one to press the button on? Uh, well, actually, if you press that button, it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, All right, right, okay. But that's a very good point. I might raise that with my IT team. <laughs> right. Uh, no, th that's just ex illustrating the process. Right. Um, but yes, at the conclusion, we, we ask every business owner to do a review of the, of the whole process. And it's interesting to see what the customers actually think in the past there. There's uh, this one here from uh, Diane in London. I've been searching for a week to get the right lawyer, but within 30 minutes of con contacting Lawyer Fair, that delivered the three expert profiles and fee proposals for me to compare. Really professional service and will return every time that I need a solicitor. Is it, I mean, you're getting very, everybody can pick up good reviews and put them on the website, but it's good that you are getting those. Do you sell the service then um, in the particular kind of vein that it's, I'm looking for someone who do T's and C's, and then I go to you saying T's and C's, and then you come back with the appropriate recommendations 
uh, if I'm looking for, if I'm doing uh, mergers and acquisitions, then I can do the same again. I can say this is the kind of lawyer I'm looking for. So it's that recommendation that you're coming back with. It isn't just it is, a blanket it, recommendation across the board. Yes, but it's an interesting point because it goes to the heart of, I think, the quality of what we do and the quality of our panel. One of the, if you go to a, a general site, you may well put in that you want X, Y, and Z done, or you want advice on X, Y, and Z, and you may get back a flood of um, well-priced offers. What we try and uh, have is lawyers on the panel who are willing to give a little bit away for free. So, for example, if it's a slightly more sophisticated request, uh, and I'm trying to think of a, uh, there was an issue we had, um, there was a company, it was a foreign company coming into the UK, they wanted to fine-tune some of their employment contracts, but there were certain issues that they weren't completely certain about. So it was very difficult to come into a, a service like ours with a slightly esoteric, not completely certain mandate and get a fixed fee quote. So what we try to do is bring three or four qualified lawyers, niche lawyers, and start a conversation. And often those lawyers will deliver within their quote or their fee proposal some initial instinctive advice. And actually different lawyers look at things in different ways and it's quite interesting that you'll get a you'll get a request that goes out and three lawyers will come back with very different types of perspective of it what that allows the business owner to do is two things first of all they can actually say well that's interesting and it might shape the way that they they deal with that issue but also it gives them uh, a little bit of the language of that individual lawyer and it's amazing how uh, lawyers who have pitched through this service We've been going roughly nine, 12 months now. Uh, lawyers have pitched. Uh, the ones that have gone into a little bit more detail at that beginning uh, and have really thought about it uh, have one work, uh, even where the price has been more, has been greater than other people quoting. So it just shows you that if the lawyer is thinking in the right way, has a modern approach, is prepared to give a little bit uh, without necessarily thinking solely about price, uh, the discerning business owner picks up on that and will often go with that lawyer. All right, well, listen, we'll come back to more of the way that the actual service works. Uh, once again, absolutely fascinating. It's Andrew Weaver joining me today from Lawyer Fair, and we're talking about maybe getting the best legal service uh, for your business. They are targeting directly small to medium scale enterprises as well, business in general. That's where they're going. This isn't just a, a general open door approach to providing a lawyer for the general public. We're talking about here an, uh, an organization, a company, a, a website that is targeting business owners. So if you're a business owner and you're looking for that legal advice and in just a moment we're going to find out the the, the kind of core competencies that maybe the lawyers or the questions that you get asked on when it comes to small to medium scale enterprises uh, we'll be doing that in just a moment can i remind you while you're watching this if you're finding it absolutely fascinating and i'm sure you are uh, it's an opportunity to subscribe to the channel uh, just up here you'll see there's a little button just about there uh, if you click on that button uh, you can subscribe straight away to our youtube channel there's a whole host of different ways that you can get involved with us here join our community at business connections live think of it really as networking through your laptop or your your smartphone it's a clever way of talking to other businesses it's also a clever way as well of getting information information like this the nice thing is we have the opportunity and the time to drill in a little bit further go in a little bit deeper find out a little bit more detail a lot of the time you can read maybe a web page you can go onto a website or maybe even make a telephone call telephone call two to three minutes website isn't going to tell you everything you need to know here you get an opportunity to hear it from effectively the horse's mouth so don't forget to subscribe and here's a few good reasons why you should be maybe pressing that subscribe button right now if you're a business owner and you need advice on how to make your business more successful, then Business Connections Live TV is just for you. Our leading industry experts cut out the guesswork for growing businesses. How to use social media, what to expect from your accountant, web design, SEO and so much more. Business Connections Live TV is here to give you the motivation you need to succeed. How you doing? My name is Brad Burton. I'm the motivational speaker that everyone's talking about right now and I'm on Business Connections Live. What a show. What a show. People, do check it out. If you're struggling with Facebook and LinkedIn. Most people that I meet are on LinkedIn. Virtually, you know, there's 14 and a half million people just mm -hmm. in the UK. Uh, I think the figures currently are 238 million people worldwide. But I would say that most of them don't really understand how to use it. How to present your ideas more effectively. Hello, I'm Philip Skinner, Shaw Walker Lees. A brilliant way to get message across. Um, I'm actually thinking that we might switch away from our quarterly newsletter to do a video and, and get it sent through to staff and clients. To generating leads and finding new business. 
Hi, I'm Jim McLaughlin, Managing Director of business development company Axial, and I'd just like to say what a pleasure it's been to have the opportunity to appear on Business Connections Live. Subscribe and be part of the Business Connections Live TV online community for free. Business Connections Live TV every Wednesday, 6 p.m. GMT, or catch up on the Business Connections Live TV YouTube channel. Make certain your business is connected with Business Connections Live TV. That's right, make sure you do subscribe right there. Go to the website as well, you can also sign up there. We're giving away, uh, one a month in fact, a video production package to one of our new subscription or one of our new subscribers. So all you've got to do is just sign up for that, straightforward and easy. He's writing it down, maybe you should be writing it down as well. Businessconnectionslive.com, just simply go to the website and just check that out. My guest this evening is Andrew Weaver. Oh look, there's the web address. Uh, my guest this evening is Andrew Weaver from Lawyer Fair. Andrew, um, I mean there has been a lot of deregulation and everything like that and, and businesses all the time are looking for uh, a good deal effectively when it comes to legal services. What are the primary things that people go through your website to find for? What are the kind of things or the services that they're looking for and what kind of services do you offer across the website? Well, we can cater for anything. Um, we, we, we can find, uh, we are growing the panel all the time, so the expertise that we have, but we can also uh, go out and, and source the lawyer that you need. So the US visa employment issue that I mentioned, we had a client, a business owner, who had a problem with a Chilean supplier, uh, which was quite an Crikey, interesting that's one. that's going to be difficult. That was it? quite a tricky one. We actually ended up going to a lawyer who had uh, a, a Chilean background. So we can actually go out and bespoke uh, find these, but, but uh, the, the general uh, types of work that we deal with uh, three categories primarily, contracts and agreements, general uh, types of issues ranging from TSC, uh, TNCs to distribution agreements, etc. Uh, we do a lot of commercial property stuff. That could be everything from uh, new leases, renewals, assignments, taking on office space, etc. Uh, we also do a little bit, because of my background in, in, in um, business sales, we do quite a lot of M&A stuff, quite a lot of buying and selling of businesses. So those are kind of the three key pillars at the moment of the work. But we do uh, an awful lot of the IP stuff is increasingly uh, coming into the, into the system. And um, investments, and, and, and that kind of nature. But there isn't a legal issue that we cannot deal with, uh, but there are certain ex areas of expertise that we're specialising in at the moment. Why have you gone specifically for businesses? Is it because you feel that, you know, things like family law and stuff like that, you just don't want to get involved with? So going for the, the business is more of a, a vertical niche market and that's what the money is? Well, it, it, I think there's a need for it, frankly. And as business owners ourselves, we felt that although there was a there is a legal comparison market and has been for, for three or four years, it, it, it isn't dedicated to this space because it's a more challenging space for them. It's not as easy to automate and standardise uh, commercial leads. And as I mentioned earlier, you've also got to, if you're going to have good quality commercial lawyers, you've got to be able to deliver a, a service that's going to keep them on board and, and happy. So there hasn't been a service that's been dedicated to the space. We felt it was necessary to do it. Uh, we're business owners ourselves, so we felt these, these direct experiences uh, to, with the traditional process. And um, the response we're getting from um, everything, from national press coverage to the customers that are using it, to the lawyers that are using our service, is that it's a very necessary uh, and a very useful service for the people that are using it. We, we mentioned earlier on that the contract is actually with the lawyer themselves after you have used your service, your introduction service effectively. Mm -hmm. What protections are built in there for the consumer or for the, the business who is using the service? Are there any sort of protections built in? The fact that they're using you and then going to lawyer? It's your recommendation after all. Or is it yep. very much a case of buyer beware? No, that's, that's a great question. Two things. Clearly there's the regulatory protection that's normal when you engage a lawyer. But we, uh, we have what's called a silver service customer care charter. This is a charter that every lawyer on our panel signs and it's been written by us as business owners and it's based on our commercial expectations of, of what, how we want lawyers to work with us and what I mean by that is every lawyer who signs up to our charter agrees to try and do fixed fees if they can't, very close to it, agrees to a certain level of customer service, in, in, agrees to a certain level of communication. And we're always happy to deliver and show this charter in more detail. But it allows us to have some form of control, or the business owner uh, via us, some form of control of that relationship. And of course, ultimately, they can review and, 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 and bring their feedback about that lawyer. So there are a number of reasons why we can control the process for the business owner in, in a way that isn't out there at the moment. Our selection process of the lawyers and the customer care charter that the lawyers sign and obviously the review process that can come out of that.
The, the panel that you set up is, is probably your major asset, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is the major asset, mm -hmm. I would imagine. How do, you, how do you sort of manage that on a daily basis? How do you make certain that when, as you grow it, as you become more successful, that the quality of the lawyers remains the same? It's going to become a bigger and bigger job to maintain. It, it, listen, it is. And, 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 and certainly, um, like any business, you know, we are learning all the way. And we want to scale this and we want to make this available. And it will become much more of a digital platform as we move forward. Um, uh, so we are embedding within the platform that we develop uh, areas that can protect that, that selection criteria, for example. Uh, but we'll always, uh, I, I hope, uh, we'll always have the same principles of direct interviews, direct market research on that individual lawyer. Uh, we're never going, we're not, in, we're not interested in listing 100,000 lawyers. We only believe in a, uh, probably five, 600 will ever be the limit, frankly. I'm, I'm saying that off the record. I can feel my colleagues bristling <laughs> at the fact that I'm just throwing that out there. But that's the kind of thinking. It's very much about, uh, you know, a niche band of lawyers who are pre-approved, who've been personally selected by us and who we can trust are going to deliver a great service. Are you reactive on an ongoing basis with your, law with your lawyer panel? I mean, will you, will you take people off that? Yeah, very much so. Yeah, we, we, we've had one or two issues already with lawyers that said they got it, signed up to the charter and then delivered, in our view, a very poor service. Uh, one where there was a, um, a retrospective fee uh, renegotiation, which we, we thought was intolerable. So we, we decided to part ways with that particular lawyer. No, we're very brutal about it. And it comes down to the fact that it is our, our reputation. And, you know, it's the old uh, saying, isn't it? You know, you, one happy customer is, is uh, sorry, one unhappy customer is far more destructive to you, particularly as you're growing the business. You know, we're trying mm. desperately to get some momentum into this uh, process. So uh, we are very, very keen on what happens in that relationship. We give feedback to the lawyers as well. It's a really important point. At the end of every month, we do a kind of review and audit of, of, of how things have gone. And the only way the lawyers can improve, and you know, no one's perfect, things do happen and mistakes are made, uh, is that we provide them with the feedback about what might have happened, what might have gone wrong, why the client or the business owner didn't select them. And we often get that feedback from the business owner. You know, what is it that made them decide on A rather than B and C? Sometimes they don't even select A, B and C, frankly. So that feedback loop is a really crucial one. And I think for the development of any business, frankly, if your ear to the ground isn't tight, particularly at the beginning, then you know, you, you're, you're missing out on a trick. So we have a very um, um, detailed and, and, and ongoing feedback loop between user and uh, between buyer and supplier. For, on a, a more general note, uh, looking, looking at the business in general and also the way you've, you've gone about the business, I asked you when you came into the studios this afternoon um, before the programme and we were talking and, you, and you, I kind of described you as a serial entrepreneur. I mean, okay, you've had family businesses which you've sold and you've moved on and you've gone into this. The actual business, the setting up of a business like this, if there are people who are thinking to themselves, do you know, I, I quite like that this kind of service providing or, or at least introductory kind of business model. Mm. What, what made you go down the route of doing that? I mean, I know you said that you saw there was a need for it, but to go down the route where you're actually, from day one, you're going to make no money effectively mm. until it actually starts mm. to work. I mean, what mm. made you go that that particular route right. as opposed yeah, I, to I a feed based I didn't realize this was psychology connections. Well, just, just check know. in. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, I, 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 uh, I've always been motivated by the individual challenge so that the businesses that I've got involved in or have set up or the family has been about the fact that I quite like that what we're trying to deliver. So I very much got involved in this because I think that it's needed. I think that technology and the internet will completely transform legal services and there are lots of people thinking the same thing. So I was personally very motivated to do it. Uh, but listen, there's no business owner watching this, and I'm sure you're the same, that hasn't gone through the same pain barriers that, that we're going through. You know, you, 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 there's very, very few businesses. The chap you sold his app to uh, Google, perhaps, is a, an example of the one that uh, had an overnight success. It, it, it That's can be very rare, though. Absolutely very rare. And I think that some people, um, particularly outside of the world of business, completely underestimate how challenging it is to launch and to run and to get the business uh, up and running. And that, that, that whole, whole growth curve, I mean, we were talking earlier about the, the curve going like that. Well, actually, the curve often goes like that mm. before you go up. So it is challenging. It's demanding. I mean, what we're doing is quite demanding. It's trying to transform 
form what is traditionally a recommendation or a referral process, a one-to-one, -one, do you know a lawyer type thing, into an online process where the element of trust, which is what you mentioned earlier, is absolutely crucial. So there are certain tools that we're building into the service that will, uh, we hope, will combat that problem. But yeah, there's certain challenges, but I tell you what, it's great fun. And uh, I, I don't wake up any morning and think this isn't a great thing to be doing and a lifestyle that I like. And, and obviously, uh, jackets are selected by me and not by my, my culture. It's been a fascinating, um, <laughs> it's been a fascinating hour, actually. I was just wondering, are we likely to see Dr. Fair? Dr. Fair, could Taxi no. Fair. I mean, uh, Taxi Fair, possibly. <laughs> Listen, there's lots of change out there, lots of reasons why. Um, the thing I'd like to finish on is... is Excuse me, I'm just writing that one down. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good idea. DrFair.com, I'm going to quickly register that. Um, listen, the, 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 you may not think it, uh, but legal services is hot at the moment. I mean, in the States last year, nearly half a billion pounds was invested in legal startups, compared, I think, the previous year to 60 billion, so, uh, million. So it's a huge growth area, and, and it's very exciting. And as a business owner, you should not any longer think the traditional way of doing it is the only way of doing it. There are people now doing legal analytics online, legal research, online dispute resolution. There's even some predictive litigation software coming through. It is being transformed uh, and we're a small part of that and we're, an ex we're excited to be a part of that. But certainly as a business owner, I mean I think in five years the way that you buy and measure and review legal services will be utterly different to anything that's happened in the past. Listen, it really has been a great hour. I found it absolutely thoroughly interesting. Uh, what I'd like you to do, though, is the takeaways that we try to give to our viewers at the end of every program. It's a couple of minutes. Straight down camera number one, say who you are, the name of the company, and, uh, and also the things that they should be considering when they're picking the phone up or when they're looking online at your website and the kind of issues that they should be going to the website for and why it's such a good idea to go to the website. Okay. And we'll give the address afterwards as well. So please, Andrew, take it away. Andrew Weaver, Lawyer Fair, there are many reasons why as a business owner you can now control the way that you uh, find and select and review lawyers. Lawyer Fair is just one small part of the changes that are taking place. Certainly from our perspective, we provide you with choice of real experts. This isn't a firm that just happens to do a little bit of IP. This is about us helping you find people who've done exactly the IP that you require. And those lawyers then compete for that work and you're able to see not only uh, the price that they can provide, but also the value that they can offer based on their own expertise. But there are lots of other services out there. There are online services where you can do fixed fee uh, legal documentation. It's crucial that you get the legal documentation and you get a competitive price for whatever you're doing. And we are just one of many options that are there that weren't there perhaps uh, five or ten years ago for you as a business owner. Andrew, thank you very much indeed. Fantastic. Andrew uh, Weaver there from Lawyer Fair. Just one last look at the website that's uh, sitting here. You can see it's all there. Very simple. Just go online. It is uh, lawyerfair.co.uk. Tells you how it works, the legal services provided, how to get in touch. Nice to see Brentford County Court getting a shout out there. <laughs> and uh, it uh, goes down uh, how to submit, to compare, to select, and also to review. Uh, a fascinating insight into maybe the future for the way that legal services are going to be provided to small the medium scale businesses. Uh, we've got a fascinating show lined up for you next week. Bet you can't wait for that one. Do watch out as well for Nikki Creel. She's going to be on the program on the 29th of October. She's going to be talking about NLP. We hope she's going to be with us. It's going to be a fascinating show. Till next week, live Wednesday night at six o'clock. From me, Steve Highland and Andrew. Have yourself a great week and a successful business. See you soon. Bye for now. Bye bye.